Welcome to Both Sides of the Story. I'm your host, Alan Janae from CBS4. Thank you for joining us. Our special high school debate series returns, challenging our students and our viewers to look at important Colorado issues from both sides. Each student will offer a case, ask and answer questions of their opponent, and offer rebuttal. We'll also feature an expert judging panel who will chime in with questions of their own. Both students have prepared a pro and a con case for tonight's debate topic, and they won't know which side they'll defend until we have a coin flip right here in our studio. Now, we have added a brand new element this year. A winner will be chosen from each school, then we'll go on to compete in the semifinals, then we will ultimately name a both sides of the story champ. Be sure to watch throughout the season as each of our winners is named and then moves on through the tournament. Tonight's program features students from the George Washington High School speech and debate team. They are ranked in the top 20 nationally, and they were recently named a school of excellence in debate at the Nationals this June. So let's meet our participants right now. First, Monroe Rausch. She is a senior, and this is her third year on the team, focusing on extemp extemporaneous speaking. When she isn't doing speech and debate, she runs cross country and she plays the flute. Next is Tristan Camp Lagur. He is also a senior and is in his fourth year on the team as a public forum debater. When he's not debating, he's running cross country as well. And we have a special panel of experts who will offer their analysis of our debate today. They are Dominic Dizzuti, host of Colorado Decides, the election debate series produced in conjunction with CBS4. Plus, Mary Rose Cohen, the head speech and debate coach at George Washington High School. And next to her is assistant coach Devin Sarno. Thanks very much, folks, for taking part here. Before we get started with the first debate, let's hear from Monroe about her experience on the team. I decided to join the speech and debate team because I knew that it was a really strong program and I knew that Miss Cohen was an amazing teacher and so many of my friends enjoyed it and I knew that I could really grow as a public speaker. We have 30 minutes to prep a seven minute speech and so I've been able to really kind of hone those skills of learning to think on my feet. For about the 15 minutes that I'm writing my speech I do tend to get pretty nervous but once I start practicing, my confidence begins to grow. And when I walk into the room with the judge, I really try to exemplify as much confidence as I can, which in turn helps me become a better speaker. Great to meet these students. Monroe says she is considering Santa Clara University as well as William and Mary next fall to study government. Okay, now Tristan tells us what he values and what he's developed while working with the GW speech and debate team. Every round, you can. there's always the possibility of winning or losing. There's no guarantee in any round. So because of that, that uncertainty, I'm always really nervous at the beginning. But once you really start getting into the debate, uh, all that nervousness goes away, and you just really get into the zone. What I like best about the speech and debate team at George is really the community feel. It really does help integrate you into the school, help create friends that you might not see in some of your classes. So because of that, that's why I like joining the debate team. Tristan is hoping to get into Duke University or McGill University to study economics and political science next year. Best of luck to both of them. You'll see they have the ability to go. Okay, time to set the ground rules here. Each side will present their case, ask each other questions, and have a chance to offer rebuttals. When it's finished, we'll go to our illustrious panel for their own questions and find out who they felt offered the best arguments. So let's get started. The issue up for debate today is whether a single payer health care system is right for Colorado. So let's have our coin flip now and get things underway. So Monroe, I'm going to bring you out to do the coin flip. You make the toss. Heads or tails? Heads. Heads it is. What would you like? I would like the affirmative side. You would like the pro, the yes. affirmative side. That means Tristan gets the con or the negative side. So Monroe, as the proponent, you go first here. The floor is yours now for three minutes. Go ahead. A single payer health care system in the United a single payer health care system means a single public agency is responsible for financing health care for all residents. The system would be effective in Colorado because it would help ensure more people. First, because it would be more inexpensive, and second, because the quality of health care would increase. 
The first reason a single payer healthcare system would help insure more people is because it is much more cheap than private insurance. The average American family paid more than $17,500 or 10% of median family income annually in health insurance last year. However, under a single payer program, healthcare would be much more affordable. When all of society pays into the same system, the pool of young and healthy people paying into the system would increase, diffusing the cost of healthcare to those individuals. By having a larger pool of individuals contributing to the healthcare fund, more people are able to access treatment. Additionally, administering healthcare under a single payer system is much less expensive. In fact, Medicare's administrative costs in 2011 were only 1.4% of their total spending. A single payer system in Colorado would ensure more people by being less expensive and therefore more accessible. Not only would a single payer healthcare system make healthcare cheaper, it would also increase the quality of healthcare. 63.5% of physicians in one study reported that they felt a single payer system would provide the best care to patients. Under a single payer system, physicians don't need to explain their decisions to the insurance company, but rather have the autonomy to provide the treatments which are the most appropriate to the situation. Also, under a single payer system, there is more incentive to direct healthcare spending towards public health measures, such as education about obesity and the dangers of cigarettes. This is because a single payer system isn't focused on short-term costs, but rather on long-term benefits unlike the system that we currently have. Monroe, thank you very much. All right, now, Tristan, you have two minutes for questions and cross-examination as you're on the con side, she's on the pro side. Go ahead. All right, um, so I guess I would ask, what would be your definition of single payer for Colorado? What would we be seeing in Colorado? So we would see that the state would be providing, would be paying for the healthcare costs of all its residents. However, private healthcare providers would still be providing healthcare, but the state would be taking care of paying for it. Okay, and then where would we be getting the funding? We would see increased taxes, but the increase in taxes would balance out the decreases in costs um, oh. after private insurance. Okay, um, in your speech you mentioned that um, some of the doctors and physicians would actually have less paperwork. Um, first of all, how does this happen? And second, how would this increase the quality of care? That we so see? we see that physicians have less paperwork because they no longer have to justify their health care decisions to private insurers. And this in turn would increase the quality of health care because we would see that health providers would be giving the treatments that were the most necessary, rather the ones that were the cheapest or that the insurance company felt the most comfortable with. Okay. Um, and then, so have single payer health programs been effective in the past? Yes, so we've seen that under the Affordable Care Act, many more people are insured who maybe didn't have health care before. And also when we look internationally, we can see that many countries which have single payer systems have a much higher rate of people who are insured with health care than people who are not. Okay. Um. And then I guess my one more, one more question for you. My final question would really be um, how would we make sure that the costs that are predicted main uh, stay the same in Colorado? Um, so there would definitely be some experimentation with a single payer program, but we could model it off of the international community in order to ensure that our costs aren't too high. All right, Tristan Monroe, thank you very much. Tristan, the floor is now yours to make your case for the con. Go ahead, three minutes. Single-payer health insurance would not be effective in Colorado for three main reasons. The first main reason is that single-payer health insurance would be extremely costly to implement with very few benefits. It is estimated that the cost of rolling out single-payer health insurance in Colorado would cost around $25 billion in the first year alone. This would lead to a 7% tax increase on businesses and 3% increase on individuals due to the inefficiencies often seen in government-run programs. That cost could easily increase. This would lead to economic detriments as companies that would face increased cost for healthcare could easily relocate to nearby states where the cost for their business would be significantly lower. 
this will lead to significant withdrawals in the Colorado economy. These increased costs to consumers would also reduce the amount of benefits seen in the healthcare system. Many issues seen in single payer systems include increased wait time for hospitals, lower quality of care, and decreased incentive to provide the greatest service for the lowest cost with minimum service provided. Then everybody will be considered covered by health insurance without any actual health benefits. Therefore, a single payer system will see decreased benefits on top of increased consumer costs. The final reason that single payer health insurance is not the most beneficial alternative is that there are much easier solutions in order to resolve issues we see in Colorado and the United States as a whole. The United States faces some of the highest healthcare costs in the world, as well as a monopoly by the major health corporations. This creates issues for cost and general access to health care. The problem is that in order to implement a single payer health system in the United States, a completely new system would have to be built. It is much simpler to introduce more stringent regulation, such as making it illegal for insurance companies to be discriminatory in their coverage. The government could also put in policies to help break up or regulate the industry giants in order to require them to drive down prices, making healthcare more accessible in that manner. This would allow us to maintain those higher levels of service in our health industry, as well as provide more widespread coverage. Tristan, thank you very much. Monroe, now you have two minutes of your own for questions and cross-examination, and that begins right now. So you talked about how businesses might relocate to other states if they had higher health care costs. How significant would that be on the Colorado economy? So there's, def there's no estimates that really give a exact number, but we can see historically with tax increases, we have seen withdrawal, withdrawals from the economy. This is seen on a larger scale as well in the United States, where we lose jobs overseas to China or um, other countries who have lower wages and therefore decrease the cost of production. So if Colorado has higher costs, businesses could relocate in order to reduce those. All right. When have we seen a decreased incentive to provide good health care in the past? Okay, so this I would point to Canada being a prime example. When we look to some of the wait times we see in those hospitals, you could wait up to 30 weeks just to receive a surgery that's not deemed um, life-threatening. So because of those increased wait times, you see decreased quality in the care, and this is as a result of less incentive to go into the industry as well as less incentive to provide the best health care possible. All right. You also talked about making more regulation for the private companies that we have now. Is it politically feasible to pass such regulation? Um, so this is going to be a difficult question because you're not going to see a lot of agreement on either side. I believe that it is actually probably more likely that we could pass regulation rather than rebuild an entirely new health care system. Um, but again, just getting agreement from both parties will be difficult in either scenario. All right. And finally, why can't we just open up Medicare, which is already a single payer system that exists for the elderly to everyone? Okay. So the biggest issue with Medicare is even though it provides service for those over 65, it is an enormous drain on the U.S. economy as a whole. And if we introduce a system specific to Colorado, we will, we will see like, um, we'll see impacts that are very similar to those we see with the drains caused by Medicare. All right, that's the uh, end for the questioning right there. Now, Monroe, you have two minutes for a rebuttal. Go ahead. Awesome. So Tristan talked about the 3% tax increase, but that would be less than the current 10% of their family income that American families are paying today for private insurance. Additionally, he talked about how companies might move to other states, but hopefully Colorado would be successful in implementing this program and would become a model for other states. And then there would be no safe havens for companies which were looking to elude health care costs. He also talked about the reduced benefits and how health care 
and hospital lines in Canada are longer. But we can see that in the long term, population health would be increased. This is because of both public education measures and because there's more access for everybody. So we would see that more people are being insured. Um, he also talked about how we could make regulation for the companies that we already have. But in today's political climate, there's no way that such, that such regulation could be passed. It's not possible for the Colorado Congress to be able to break up monopolies given the fact that the health lobby is so strong. Um, so therefore, we can see that many of the points that he's made um, will not work and that having a single payer system it will be the best thing for Colorado. All right, on both sides today, we're debating whether or not the single payer system of Colorado pays would be right for Colorado. And Tristan, you now have three minutes to respond and close. Go ahead. All right, so my opponent talks about in her first argument of how we are actually making this cheaper and how having a wider pool of people paying into the system would actually diffuse those costs. What we see is that that's not necessarily true. The first example I would say is point to Medicare, where it's actually one of the greatest strains on the U.S. economy today. So if we implement a system in Colorado, we could see similar results. Another argument that I would say is that there would be a significant tax increase it was 3% on individuals and 7% on businesses, and this is one of the more conservative estimates. Not only would this raise taxes, this would practically double the current state budget. So because of those reasons, you aren't really going to see these proposed benefits of it actually being cheaper. Uh, the second main argument that she proposed is that there is this increased quality in care and she references this number of 63.5% of physicians that believe that this system would actually be more beneficial. Well, phys physicians that believe this system may be more beneficial does not actually demonstrate that there is actual benefits. What we have seen historically, Canada being a very prime example for this, is that wait times go up and the quality of care is significantly lower. With a business model with private uh, incentive, the, uh, the provider is trying to provide as great of benefit as possible to maintain services coming to their hospital. When it becomes public under a single payer health system, then we will not be seeing these benefits as um, a lot of the incentive is taken away from these hospitals. So we do not see increased quality. Um, now, to go back and kind of affirm some of my points that I've made. So I've, all, I've already outlined the extreme cost that this would face. So the Colorado economy would face a burden of $25 billion per annually in the first year alone, with the possibility that, that that could significantly increase. Not only would that be a $25 billion impact, it would be 10% overall tax increase, which would significantly harm the economy in Colorado. With this, we may possibly see some of the relocation of business that we often see associated with a tax increase. In terms of reducing benefits, we see that there are increased wait times, decreased incentive in hospitals, so we often see lower standards of health care being provided. Um, and the third is not being most beneficial. My opponent tried to argue that we are not able to pass this through Congress, but we, she fails to prove is that a single-payer health system would be significantly more beneficial. Tristan, thank you very much. The question at hand today, of course, is whether Colorado Care is right for Colorado. Monroe, finally, your one-minute close. Go ahead. All right. We can clearly see that a single-payer system in Colorado would be very beneficial because it would allow more individuals to be insured, and therefore it would increase the overall health of Colorado citizens. Because healthcare would be so much cheaper for individuals, more people would have access to programs and therefore would be more willing to go and get the healthcare that they need. And we've also seen that the public education measures are extremely important. 
For example, teen smoking has gone down significantly after public education about the dangers of cigarettes. So we can see that single payer, that a single payer system would not only increase health care for some individuals, but would also improve the overall health of society, clearly demonstrating that it would be beneficial for Colorado. Thank you, Monroe Roush, Tristan Camp Lagur. Thank you very much for the pro side from Monroe, the con side from Tristan. So let's go to our panel of experts and get their thoughts on what they saw right now. So Dominic, take it away. Alan, thank you very much. I think both of you have a lot to be proud of. I think uh, the current campaign would be lucky to have either one of you on their side. Uh, let's get to uh, some questions. I think we're going to start with our uh, affirmative case with Monroe. Uh, Mary Rose, do you want to start with the first question? Sure. So you talk about the fact that physicians would no longer have to justify their decisions on certain procedures. But is it possible that then they would benefit financially from doing certain procedures? And isn't some sort of accountability good in that industry? Yes, accountability definitely would be good. And there are, there could still certainly be some regulations under a single payer system. But when in physicians don't have to justify their decisions to a private health company, they're more likely to make the best decisions regarding the health care of the patient. Thank you. Let me throw in one question for myself. Um, Essentially, this lets the government do the job of collecting the fees and paying for it. Do you have any other examples where the government being in charge of collecting fees and doing the thing actually does it better? Yeah, so we've definitely seen that Medicare is an important part of many elderly people's health care programs. And many people rely very heavily on Medicare, which has been able to do a very adequate job of providing health care for senior citizens. Thank you. Uh, Tristan, it's your turn. Um, Deb, would you like to ask your first question? Sure. Uh, Tristan, you uh, spoke about the decreased quality care. Can you explain why you feel that people who, uh, as we move forward to a single payer healthcare system, people would be less incentivized to move into the medical field? Um, so generally associated with government regulation or having the single payer health system is kind of there generally is lower wages as we often see in Canada um, because these physicians don't have those private incentives to pursue those degrees um, and if those wages are lowered then reaching that degree significantly lowers that benefit so because of that we see that even in em employees there is less incentive just to go into the field in the first place Tristan, let me uh, uh, toss one in here. We, uh, much of the debate you both spent on Canada, and it seems right now people look at Canada for lower costs, people even going there for, for drugs, but the long wait times that you cited. Right now in America, we're seeing insurance costs go through the roof and it increases every single year. Do you think Coloradans would like to give up enduring those increases for some wait times for some surgeries that could indeed wait? Um, so, what we've seen in Canada is actually that we aren't seeing this trend of many people staying and waiting. Those who are financially unable to do so are generally required to stay. But many Canadians actually opt to travel to the United States in order to get their operations done depending on the severity and the amount of time they have to wait. So what we see is even with a single payer health system, there are many people who travel to the United States just to receive their treatment because they can receive such high quality care. Well, this is going to be a tough one, isn't it? It, it? took the words out of my mouth, Alan. It's, uh, <laughs> we thought it was tough before the uh, answer's back. I think they just made our, our job a little tougher. <laughs> Give us a minute. It's a big issue, of course, and a tough one on the ballot this year as to whether Colorado Care, a single-payer health system in Colorado, is right or wrong. We've had our pro, we've had our con. We're going to give our panel a moment to consider who they felt won that debate. And it gives me a moment to let you know that this is one of eight different debates we're presenting this season. To check all of them out, you can go to cpt12.org forward slash election. All right, panel, do you have a decision? We do indeed. It was difficult, um, but uh, both of you, again, did a, a fantastic job. But we felt at the end of the day, the argumentation we heard from Monroe uh, won the debate. Uh, again, I think both campaigns, would, the, the current campaigns, would be lucky to have you both. But uh, it was a, a, a great debate. And Monroe, congratulations.
Very good. Congratulations, Monroe Roush. You both gave viewers a wonderful debate tonight, and you both should be very proud of your performances here. You'll now go on to defend George Washington against Andrew Ying. He's from Cherry Creek High School's speech and debate team, and that will air on Friday, October 28th at 9.30 p.m. right here on CPT12. That's all we have time for in our program tonight. I want to thank our excellent students for accepting our challenge and participating in our important debate. I also want to thank our esteemed panel for sharing their thoughts. And finally, thank you for tuning in. It's the support of our viewers, of people like you, and our sponsors that helps make this show a reality. This is the fourth of eight episodes of Both Sides of the Story. Be sure to tune in next Friday at 9.30 p.m. to see Jack Cohen from the Denver East Forensics team take on Cole Rickey from St. Mary's High School of Colorado Springs, debating whether Colorado communities should have the right to ban hydraulic fracturing. If you're looking for more information about this program or about the Colorado Decides debate series, go to our website site cpt12.org forward slash election or cbsdenver.com and you can catch me every morning on cbs4 for all of the latest news and information about this year's election and its issues for everybody here at colorado public television i'm alan janae thanks for watching good night remember that is both sides of the story